First, I just want to share a, a quick tirade. Um, it's been a while. It's like once a year I do a tirade. So I'm going to be as brief as I can with this and about this. But I'm going to do it now so that the folks that do the edits of the um, videos can censor me. No. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do it now so they can cut that and make it a separate video from the service itself. So uh, be patient with me. I'm, I'm just, I, I, I have a couple notes of things you guys have been asking lately about the condition of the world. So I'm going to share a, a brief tirade about this. Um, in case it's not obvious, the world is dying, okay? I know, th this is an upbeat kind of thing, but the world is dying. But the good news is it was never alive in the first place. So the world we think we see is not one that's the real world. Or as Yogananda puts it, this is not our home. So don't get too discouraged when things are going wonky in a wonky world. That's what it should be doing. Right? This is technically par for the course. You know, what's really happening is our hearts are getting broken because we can't keep it hidden anymore that this isn't the real world. So the truth is coming out. Haven't you ever been upset by a relationship? Or a job that started falling apart that you knew wasn't good anyway? Of course. Because our delusions, which means to be disillusioned, but why were you illusioned in the first place? So it's okay. It hurts. It does. I mean, part of me, man, I mean, I know these things and I still go, God, you know, if only. That's a part of me. Because it's a drag to see people in such pain. But the world is changing. It's falling apart. If you don't believe me, look at anything. <laughs> Just look at anything. Look at a tree, and they're not as lush sometimes because the water is different, and the water is less. Religion, I mean, my God. I, I, and these are things I've said 30, 40 years ago, and I reiterated them a few years ago. You know, religion has no idea what to do because all the traditional religions, the people are leaving for happier spiritual traditions. I don't mean just here. I mean, even still fundamental Christian uh, uh, centers are filling up with people that were guilted and shamed, and they went to maybe Christian groups, but some of the more positive, happier, you know, groups. So religion is going to be able to hold what it once held, not to mention all the lawsuits and things that went on from abuses. Wow, how strange is that? that? That there's so much information now coming out about dark behaviors in churches. That, that's not the way they were supposed to be doing things. But it's an illusion, this world. The environment is dying. Pollution, greed is pulled and drained all the resources. Oceans. Jacques Cousteau said in the 70s that the damage to the oceans is irreversible. In the 70s. It was already irreversible. It didn't mean it was unlivable at the time. It's, it's, it's basically about pro projections and progressions. It's, it's looking at things and how they're happening exponentially. That's why he was able to predict that. And he was right. Probably very heartbroken to see it happening. Don't get me started on, on movies and TV shows. It's just all hopeless, man. Um, people just don't know how to, you know. And when a movie comes out that has any spiritual depth, the critics fire away on it. Why? Because the critics are people that couldn't make it in the industry, so they became critical of the industry. So, you know, and they have struggles spiritually, and they don't get it. You know, you, you do a spiritual movie, and they just fire away at you. Uh, I remember uh, somebody I talked to a couple of different times, John Anderson, okay, the singer from Yes. And John Anderson, you know, he, he, was, he was saying, you know, about this one album, Tales from Topographic Oceans. Before Tales came out, he was saying, you know, Michael, the, the, the thing was, we did Fragile, and we did these other albums, and we were, I was getting so much download of spirituality. He said, but the critics, the more I got spiritual, the more the critics attacked me. So they were like, who does he think he is? Which is the same as you and I here. Who does he think he is? Next thing you know, he's going to put the Bible to music. And he said, so you know what I did? I did it except it was the Vedas. He went and read an autobiography of a yogi, and he, he got really interested in the, the notes Yogananda made about the studies that he had been through, and he put that to music. Hence, the first side of the first album is called The Revealing Science of God. You know, what are, what are critics going to do with that? Immediate, they're not going to listen to it, and they're going to criticize it. I remember a band member who said, well, one time we were in concert, the concert was over. We went to a pub to kind of sit back, celebrate, and we saw a critic there. 
He never even attended the concert, but he was writing a review about the concert, panning them, snubbing them. And so they found out, they saw what he was doing, and they found out, you know, and it's like, hey, this is not cool. So they beat him up. Anyway, um, <laughs> creative arts, even as simple as, I mean, honest to God, guys, painting, it's becoming all, all computerized, which has its benefit too. Paintings aren't being appreciated like they could have been. Beadwork, I mean, so many things. Everything's being farmed out to people that aren't, aren't even... There's, there's a purpose to the beadwork. There's a purpose to the pottery. You know, this wasn't about how can we sell stuff. It was meaningful. All the designs on Native American pottery, they say something. But it's, it's all getting manufactured. And what that means is something is dying. It's what it means. If fruit isn't on the tree, leaves aren't on the tree, it could be a symbol that something's dying. It's the same with creative arts. And government, you know, I hope you don't need convinced about that one. I mean, government, um, their purpose was to guide and govern. And instead, it ended up being to control. So it's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. You know, race, you know, this is hilarious to me. We are not races. We are perfect children of light and God. We don't really have skin color. This is part of the illusion, part of the hologram. That's all. But I understand, you know, people still need to feel that or think that or believe that. A lot of people don't know. Um, Pocahontas, she was an ancestor of Robert E. Lee. She was an ancestor of, of uh, um, um, Andrew Jackson. One of, his relative, one of his family members anyway, Pocahontas. Well, so in the 19, early 1900s, there was this whole thing being created about pro-white only. Everyone else is, is bad, only whites, until they found out Pocahontas was their ancestor. And then they said, well, a little color is okay. So they were out there being anti-colored, and they called all colored, all races were called colored at that time by these white supremacists. So what's interesting is <laughs> then they found out a lot of the founders of our own country that they were promoting had Pocahontas' ancestry to them. And they're like, okay, an addendum. You're allowed to have a little color. What I'm saying, guys, is who decides that? That's like the Vatican deciding you can eat fish and then you shouldn't eat fish on Fridays or this day or that day. They decide someone's a saint, they're not a saint. Who makes this stuff up? Who gets to decide this? I'm saying to you, I wouldn't get caught up in it. If I were you, I would laugh and just go, you know, I'm done. I'm done forming opinions about anything because I'm always wrong. If I say something about racism, I'm wrong. Look at genders. What? I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do with that, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a thing. I'm a nondescript being. I think it's hilarious, but I've made jokes about it years ago because it's just an illusion. It also is sad because it is a sign that people don't know who they are anymore. You get that? But it's also a great statement to say, and we shouldn't be defined by what people tell us that we are or, you know, what we are, who we are. Um, music, I said a long time ago, music was going to die and it's dying and it did die. I said it in the 80s in an article I wrote for a magazine. It's going to die. I could see it coming. I knew it was coming, and it did come. And people have been angry when I've said that. I've had, of course, musicians write an email. Don't email. Go to a different program, um, you know, if that would bother you to hear that. It's dying. All the arts, everything in this world is dying. The government, the race, the, everything is dying. And this isn't a pessimistic thing. How can you be praying for heaven on earth while you still want earth to be on heaven? Let things be what they really are. And that means the things that are not, they're going to fall away. And they're, it's happening. And we can't control that now. The end is coming. The major transition, ascension into new beings and consciousness. It's happening now. So, yeah, the gender thing, the music thing, economy. You've got to be kidding me. Is anybody real, you know, still thinking the economy is going to ever turn around? It could bounce back one step, but it's going to fall again two steps. Because the economy is also an illusion. People have invaded other countries just for money. 
Why would you ever be convinced and hypnotized into thinking you have the right to harm another person for cold cash or whatever it is? I mean, where's the conscience here? So if you, if you don't believe that the economy and greed have taken over the world, go to Home Depot. Find an employee. Find an employee. Call. We're always on the phone an hour waiting for them to answer. And it's not the employees. What it is is the people in charge of the countries and businesses. They sit there saying, here's how much I made last year and 10 years ago. That's never going to change other than going up. If ever there's a problem, you're going to get fired and you're going to do more work than you were doing yesterday. Because they want their little reality illusion to maintain. If you think this is pessimistic, then side with this. Say, you know, Michael, I think there's, a, there's another option. There's only one if people could get over greed. I personally, I, I, I swear to you, uh, uh, pretty consistently in my prayers, I ask, you know, I'm open, receiving more money so I can give more money away. Some people get offended. They go, well, Michael, we like to support you in your ministry. We're offended that you just go and give it away. Then don't give me anything. Because this is the way it should be, should have always been, and will soon be. You can't have anything that you don't give away. If you think you need to keep it, you're going to be in darkness, which is why the world is falling apart and governments and businesses and all that. So things are all falling apart. And lastly, there are sun flares. They happen every 11 years. The sun has its poles shift every 11 years. And there are sun flares happening. They shouldn't happen for a few more years because they peak when the poles shift in 11 years. Then you have a little more sun flares. But just so you know, they're happening unusually a few years ahead of time, which means they're probably only going to increase. That's not a great sign. And then the world will say, you know, it's going to do this to your electronics, it's in your cell phone, and oh, how inconveniencing. Everybody gets all upset about their little realities. This is part of what's happening. If it's about the sun shifting poles, we're the son of God, the child of God. That's what we are. And if that sun is flipping, I wonder what it means about us. So I leave you with this thought. The planets don't affect you. You affect them. The planets are mirroring when it's time to go back over communication. Mercury goes retrograde, but it does to serve us. It does so to serve us. Sun flares do not cause mankind problems. The sun's like, what did I do? I'm just... Shining. The reason the sun has flares that seem to affect our planet is because we flare up and cause the planet to flare back. We, our attitudes are being mirrored in the sun. I swear to you. But we like to blame and we like to project and we like to say, if only this didn't happen and that didn't happen, then everything would be peachy. And that's not the case at all. We have problems and they're inside. They can't go away, and it isn't going to be the government or religion or science to fix them. They're, those three are the unholy trinity on this planet. But I'm not saying they're bad, they're causing us problems. We hired them. We allowed them to have the control they seem to have. But they don't have any control. Ultimately, that's why they're falling apart. It's like Spirit's way of saying, hey, you know the things you put into power, they're going to dissolve. When are you going to go, I get it. So I promise you this. It's all changing and there will come a time, and it's happening now, where all the things we were, you know, uh, believing in, they're falling apart. But for good reason, because God says way back from the beginning of time, I want you to hear my voice in your heart. You don't need people to govern you. Just know your divinity and it will govern you. I promise you. That's what God says. I promise you, folks. We've never been separate, God says. All I want you to do is remember that we've never been separate, and you'll know what's right for you. You won't drive too fast. You won't need the signs on the road. You won't need people to govern you because it'll all be here. It already is, but you'll feel it, and you'll know what's right. You'll know that you should not kill or steal or whatever else. You don't need the commandments. They're going to become the obviouses. The ten obviouses. <laughs> so... We're going to, you know, the prognosis doesn't look good, but it is good because of who we are. This isn't a war of heaven and hell and one might win or the other one might win. This can only have a good outcome. Only have a good outcome because of who we really are. We're part of God. 
I am part of God and I am very holy. A Course in Miracles quote. Oh, and that's where I rest. That's where I rest my mind. That's where I rest at ease, knowing that no matter how the world looks, everything's going to be fine. That doesn't mean you should pretend that it is okay as it is. Guys, if you're going to be leaders, which I believe you are, if you're going to be leaders in this world, you're going to have to grin and bear it. You're going to have to realize it's going to hurt a little to watch the illusion fall away. You can't pretend it doesn't hurt or that it's not falling away. And certainly don't close your eyes and ears and endorse the illusion. It's going to keep happening. I, I know this and I still hurt over this whole thing. I still feel the pain of seeing what races are still doing to each other and people that have and people who do not have and so on and so on. It's, it's, it's all lunacy. And some of you are from other countries that are being invaded at this time. You know, and my heart goes out to you, but I'm grateful that you're not there now. You're here. Unity of Sedona is going to continue being a, a, a center of this light that we are. We're going to keep nurturing that light, and we're going to keep saying no to the rest of the world that seems to be going nuts. We don't need to, to, to be under a hypnosis. Uh, lastly, just an example. Once upon a time, there was this band, you might have heard of them, the Beatles. Um... <laughs> The Beatles released their most creative album of all time, Sgt. Pepper's. And everybody sees it as the greatest album of all time, most, most people. But when that album came out, it didn't make it to number one. It only made it to number two, which is really strange. Why? Well, because people aren't, they weren't as accepting, and they're sometimes even now not accepting more spiritual material. But that's fine. Creative material as well. So they released that album. It only went to number two. And why was that? Because the number one critic in the United States panned it. He said it was terrible. He just beat it up. So people that like to be hypnotized into what to believe, they went with it and didn't pursue listening to the album or buying it. It was 40, 30 to 40 years later, the critic came out and said, you know why I panned that album? You know why I dissed that album? Because I was gay and I didn't know it and I had a crush on the Beatles. And I didn't want to own because it was unacceptable. Can you imagine this? I felt gay inklings towards these wonderfully beautiful men, but also the energy, their creativity. And I was afraid to let anybody know or see that. So he compensated with anger, admits it years later, and I think it's amazing. I think it's beautiful that he said that. But I wonder if I was one of the people that let myself go with what he said when he was coming from his fear. How would I feel about that? Don't let people that are afraid make your decisions in your life. Or you're just, you, you are literally being hypnotized. I don't recommend it. Thank you.